I went to the Pursuit of Truth. I thought this one was interesting. I had a Sky News. And another example of why our system, which is all around the world, we all have the same template system. It's funny how, you know, we, we're all far away from each other, 300 whatever plus countries that there are. And, you know, the West and the rest and whatever that don't like each other and all this that happens. But yet we all ha have somehow managed to all have the same template. Money governed by a, a vast majority of a few companies. Um, everyone having money, schools and, and governments and all the same thing that, you know, whatever country you go to, they all have the same kind of system. And they all have the same acknowledgement to the system and that whoever set up the money that this is worth more than this and this is worth less than this and all, your GDP is this and all that kind of mathematical stuff that puts countries above and below each other everyone just adopts that even though it puts them in a bad situation and all their people that are within so this is about in the UK the council there's a lot I did have a bit about this but previously about councils they're all going bankrupt so there's another thing that to do with money we live in a system unnecessarily where everything's about money uh, an arbitrary man-made construct that puts suffering on us unnecessarily because now because of this we have this council of run out money so there's lots of people that are looking for homes people are homeless whereas there's enough land enough resources for everyone to have a place if we lived in a different way and not this greedy possessive way that we live within and where people are suffering and this lady's story it touched me so that's why i wanted to put it on here this is why we need to change. For a one bedroom property, the average waiting time in Hastings is four years. For a two bedroom, it's five years, and for a three bedroom, it's six years. For millions of people, a place to call home is a dream, not a reality. This is Hastings, a seaside town that sums up Britain's housing crisis. House prices have doubled here in a decade, and the wealthy have snapped up second homes. But popularity comes with a price. There just aren't enough homes to go round. My whole life is in one room. And he's so used to being in a trapped room that the outside world for him is hard to deal with. Private rents have soared, salaries stagnated, and landlords are evicting record numbers of tenants who now find themselves homeless. Just worry that you're not going to give them the best life that they should have. Years ago, you know, temporary meant temporary, but now it's not uncommon for, for households to be in there for years. The council office on the seafront in Hastings is where the homeless come for help. The bailiff's turned that down, uh, quarter past 20 past 10. 77-year-old Eunice arrived here with her possessions packed into just a few bags. Her landlord wanted the property back, so she's been evicted. Last year she lost her husband. Now she's lost her home. So you don't have anywhere to stay? No. No. How do you feel about that? Well, I don't feel very happy about it, because I've always had somewhere. I've never been in this situation in my life before. I've always had my kids, always had somewhere to live. I've never been on the streets in my life. I never thought I'd ever come home, just believe me. <laughs> so this is a list of people we currently have booked in that are waiting for housing appointments. One of 29 pages. Wow, there's a lot of people um, there. There's a lot of people there waiting for housing appointments. Morning, Leah. Morning. I'm Phil, nice to meet you. 18-year-old Leah and her 14-month-old daughter, Livia, are about to be made homeless. Their landlord has served them with a Section 21 eviction notice, meaning it's not their fault. I honestly, I lost it this weekend. I've searched everywhere. I've searched like hotel rooms, everything. Me and my mum were on the phone constantly. Do you know why you've been given a Section 21? The landlord wants to sell. Does he? Yeah. Do you know what? There's so many landlords around, they're just selling. And it's just, there's still enough rental properties for people. No, but it's just, that is it. And it's, we've lived there for... 16 years now. According to Crisis, landlords are using Section 21s a lot. They're up by a third this year, and tenants can't do anything about yeah. it. The government's promised to ban them, but they haven't. It's just a Hastings. It's a tourist town. Everyone wants to be here. Like, 
can't do anything about it, you just gotta deal with it, and yeah. Right. We've spent a week inside Hastings Borough Council, which is spending a third of its entire budget on temporary accommodation. Housing officers admit they're often overwhelmed. Essentially, we're seeing people in the biggest crisis of their lives, aren't we? But they're coming in, they don't know where they're going to go, what they're going to be doing, what sort of place it's like. So it is really, really hard and really sad. Tenants are at the mercy of a computer system that requires them to bid on a property they're interested in. Today there are six properties that are available to bid for. Um, in comparison, there's about 1,500 households on the housing register. Right, As you so can see, the supply just nowhere meets the, the demand. So somewhere today there'll be someone clicking on this somewhere, mm -hmm. thinking, hoping against hope. Oh yeah, yeah fingers crossed, theirs. absolutely. But actually absolutely. the odds are completely stacked against them and it's likely that whoever's looking at this isn't going to get this at all. Completely, completely. We're going to go in and we're going to go back up the stairs, OK? No. It's okay. No, right. We go outside another day, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Being in here, it, it does, eats away at you. It's like you just, you wake up and you're waiting. Am I going to get a house today? And you know, you're bidding and you're getting nowhere and you get excited for this week and you're like, am I going to get somewhere today? And it's like, you're not moving. You're not, you're not getting anywhere. And I think at this point I've just lost hope. I feel like I'm never going to have a home. Like more than 100,000 other households in England alone, Jessica is stuck in temporary accommodation. It's been like this for five years, and she's only 20. And for her son, Leo, this small room is the only home he's ever known. What kind of oh, impact does it, all of this have on Leo? He's so used to being in a trap room that the outside world for him is hard to deal with. Even just going for a walk, going out to a play group he doesn't know how to act and you kind of see it in him he's a little bit like what 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 do i do when i actually became homeless we went to about five estate agents in town and everyone that we walked into they were like we won't accept you we won't accept you and you know we talk about politicians saying that they understand the housing crisis they don't it's all a big front we're just nobodies and you're not you're not important and you don't matter i got just action me and my boyfriend is sick we live in a tent all of a sudden teresa and eli come bursting through the housing office doors desperate I can get some to talk to you if you want me to. Phil tries to calm her down, but she's upset. I'm sleeping in the cold. I'm very stressed. Okay. Teresa takes a seat. She's breathless, anxious. My clothes is all damp. My boyfriend is sick. Phil needs to quickly figure out if Teresa and her boyfriend are a priority. So he runs their names through the system. I think they were rather out of hours already. There are strict government guidelines when it comes to who can get priority for housing. Pregnant women, single mums, people fleeing domestic violence, care leavers and so on. But Phil believes Theresa and Eli have an open case with a neighbouring council and there's nothing he can do to help them. So I've had a look on the system. Um, basically, so look, I mean, this is from what I can see is yeah. that oh, there's an open case with Tunbridge Wells. Yeah. Don't shoot, don't bite my head off. I'm no, just telling you what I. Um, but yeah. there's no open case with Hastings because you haven't got the local connection to Hastings. I went to the office. So what do you get paid for? We have to follow guidelines, unfortunately. No, so we, you don't. We do, you're we sitting follow. in the office. Go over there. We, see me name. We're homeless. Sure. Teresa and Eli have been homeless for years. They tell me. Sometimes they stay with friends, other times this is all they have. When you go to bed at night on here, what's it like? Uh, like they're going to die now. Yeah. Our heart could stop any time in that cold. Eli and Teresa are like a pair of lost souls and because they've moved around so much over the years, it's just not clear who should take responsibility for them. But in the grander scheme of things, of all the people around here who need housing, it appears to me that those two really are at the bottom of the pile. Because it's about priority, those with the greatest need are helped first. 
we're going to go and see Chelsea, um, who's a single mum with two children with physical health issues. I'm out with Vanessa. She's one of Hastings' most experienced housing officers, and her most recent case goes to the heart of what priority really means. So the property that she's in at the moment isn't suitable now due to her children's health, so we're looking at moving her. Single mum Chelsea has been living in temporary accommodation for a year after being served with a no-fault eviction. <laughs> Seven-year-old Harley and six-year-old Jesse both have Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a severe muscle-wasting disease that gets worse over time. They're active now, but soon they'll both need wheelchairs, eventually help to breathe, and will likely not survive past 30. There's no cure for Duchenne. What strikes me about this is how narrow everything is. Yes. Kind of the complete opposite to what you'd want if you've got wheelchairs. The kitchen is the narrowest kitchen oh I think I've ever seen. Like... It's definitely very narrow. It's going to be hard to find that suitable property that is big enough for both of these kids to live in. And it's not going to be just for now. It's got to be until they pass away. So, yeah. Goodness me. It's hard. Goodness me. Yeah. That's hard to say out loud. That's it hard is, for me it to is. hear. <laughs> it is. Mm. I'm sorry, it's, it is hard to talk about. Because you just worry that you're not going to give them the best life that they should have. Where you see other children their age have the houses, the properties, where they can just be kids. My kids can't just be kids, and that is what hurts me the most. And that's why, while they're still walking, I want to give them what they should be doing as kids. But we'll just have to see how it goes. What keeps you going? My boys. It seems that Chelsea has the weight of the world on her shoulders. She just needs a long-term, stable home, and there isn't one. She is not alone. There are more than 500 households living in temporary accommodation in Hastings. It has become a divisive, highly politicised issue. All of these look empty to me. In fact, this whole block looks empty. Why are these homes empty? Grace, Hello. how are you doing? I'm Nick, lovely to meet you. And you? Thank you so much for giving us your time. No Grace is a no-nonsense, straight-talking local campaigner trying to get other locals to stand up and fight what she says is a deliberate neglecting of social housing stock so that it can be sold privately for profit. So there's 53 flats in here which are all empty, were emptied last summer. It's owned by a housing association called Orbit, and they have, they decide, they said that these flats are not up to modern thermal efficiency standards, but most of the houses in Hastings are probably not up to modern thermal efficiency standards, and we're not gonna flatten all of them. So it's just another drain of social housing out of the system. What do you think about what the government says? They understand the problem and they're trying to tackle it. Well, it's just not true. As I said, the, the government's, all the government's policies are aimed at greasing the wheels of the big developers and the big house builders. That's the only thing they're interested in. Why are these homes empty? Yeah. Uh, you know, we'd like to know and we'd like Orbit to tell us. We asked Orbit what the plan is for this block of flats and they said they aim to provide as much affordable housing on the site as planning decisions allow. But they could not confirm what proportion of the new development would be earmarked for social housing. Hastings isn't unique Money. in this housing crisis. There's a chronic shortage of affordable social homes. Councils used to own houses, millions of them, and from the 1980s onwards, right to buy meant tenants could purchase their homes. Now, councils like Hastings are coming full circle, buying some of those houses back with the help of government money. It would have been a local authority property 20, 30 years ago, sold under right to buy. Now we've bought it back and we'll be using it to um, offer to someone who's uh, in emergency accommodation at the moment. And it's quite odd, isn't it? Because ex-council house 30 years ago you probably sold it to someone and now here we are you're buying it back 
Yes, needs must. We can either keep going, spending 400, 500 pound a week on temporary accommodation, which just isn't good enough, or we can, yeah, bite the bullet and say, right, you know, we need to get, get back into this, start building up our portfolio again. The Conservatives and Labour don't agree on much, but they do agree on how to tackle the housing crisis, build 300,000 homes a year. But last year, only 9,500 new social rented homes were completed, nowhere near enough for the 1.1 million people on the waiting list. Should we go in to have a look now? Ready? <gasps> Chelsea and her boys were moved into accommodation. It's still temporary, but there's more space to cope with their increasing needs. So are we going to be happy in this home, do you think? Yeah! Are you going to be happy, Harley? Yeah! Yeah! Eunice was moved into temporary accommodation after her eviction. But she is still on the waiting list, and she's been on it for seven years now. What does an average day look like for you from the moment you get up? I don't ever want to get up. My whole life is in one room. My whole entire life. And then there are people like Leah, taking their first steps into this broken system. For a one-bedroom property, the average waiting time in Hastings is four years. For a two-bedroom, it's five years, and for a three-bedroom, it's six years. Her journey into the unknown just beginning. Uh, now, in response to Nick's reporting, the Department for Leveling Up Housing and Communities said, figures show the majority of families who have been in temporary accommodation for long periods of time are living in council-owned properties or private rented sector homes rented by the local authority. This provides a suitable home whilst families wait for settled accommodation and councils have a responsibility to help families uh, find this as quickly as possible. Six years. They say that's why we've given them 1.2 billion over three years through the Homelessness Prevention Grant and our 1.5 billion affordable homes programme will go further to deliver thousands more affordable homes to rent and buy across the government. Uh, but the, the solution is quite simple. Let's get rid of money. Why? Why we're shackling ourselves? I don't get why. I know it's because you know, this is the way it is, and but that is the the problem. The problem is the way that we're living. Is it going to take AI, Chat B, GBT, to tell us this is your problem? You stupid human beings! You don't have to live like this you don't have to have money and all this suffering because of it because you've got every resource you've got every person you've got every bit of space that you possibly can leave everyone to live nicely and the only reason or not is because you're holding on to your forefathers and those who made up these stupid ideas thousands of years ago just because they were possessive and greedy and didn't care about the suffering of the individual or the collective take care take easy god bless and peace